All right. Who, who do we play as? What do we do? I was going to play as Pascalina. Because I have no idea what this is. Now, the one thing I wanted to check is... Okay, survive. Oh, this is how we get the Rune Tracer, which is something we desperately need uh, to be able to unlock stuff. Okay, cool. And we're going to go for the Inlaid Library. The Mad Forest is a little harder. And so I just want to live for as long as possible. Now, how does this work? Oh, is it like the bone? No. Okay, so it bounces off of the screen and does strike through. Holy shit, this thing is strong. Especially if we can get multiple of these. Like, if I could get this on Bone Boy, I think we'd, even have, we'd be in a very happy spot. So here's the question. What do we build towards? Magic Wand is good. I'm going to go for the Santa Water, even if it's maybe not as practical at the moment. Once you get a couple... Uh, once you get a couple Santa Waters down, everything gets pretty juicy. Uh, boo. Do I have... I do have the guide open. Cool. I kind of do. Let me move this to a different tab. Because what do... We, I mean, this character might not be a bad... Bad example of a character ahead for the... Uh, to head for, like, a more projectile-based build. But I just got... Hmm... Because the fire wand plus spinach is good. Ebony wings doesn't work that well. So what's the difference between pigeon, pigeon and ebony wings? Uh, what direction it goes. So clockwise for the ebony wings, I think, and counterclockwise for the pigeon or vice versa. I forget. And the question is, do I want to go for the cross, which is a little bit... Nah, let's go for the fire wand. I'm going to try and rush for projectiles here, I think. But I might want to pick up garlic. If garlic shows up, I'll grab it. Could you get both? No. Um, I'm going to go for empty tome. There's a number of these that I think I'd want more. But at the same time, empty tome and cooldown reduction in general is going to work better for me. I did... I guess I did pick up the, the Santa water. So there is some level of like, oh yeah, as a thing I could just grab these and yeah I should grab the green stone it's worth it okay another level in rune tracer because clover clover combos with cross is still good and worth investing towards so I probably should seeing double both you and splatter playing this yeah I I saw splats tweet about this uh, a couple days ago where he was just like yo this game looks like really good and I figured you know what screw it it's three bucks I'll give it a shot and I, by and far, it is the best $3 game that I will play all week. Possibly all year. I mean, there's a number of games you can keep, uh, get for dirt cheap. I want to try the lightning ring, but I don't, I don't know if this is the run for it. What is the bouncing thing? It's called Rune Tracer. It's a, it's a starting item specific to this character. And once you get her to a certain level, then uh, you get it for good on all other characters. And it's, like, absurdly good for the library, apparently. I actually want to get, get the bracer here for this. Just for the faster bounce. I'm actually... I'm going to grab it. Because we've got a couple of projectiles that is going to help along the way. Because it doesn't seem, seem to work like a lot of other uh, projectiles. It just goes until it runs out of duration. As opposed to it goes until it runs out of damage. They damage up by five and last longer. Okay, let's just kind of scoot around these guys. What we really need is the duplicator, but who knows if I'm going to be able to get my hands on that. But yeah, there, there's probably going to be a number of games that are like five dollars on a Steam sale that are going to be more worth it than this game, but. I don't know. I feel like that's cheating. Okay. Yeah. I these these bouncers actually might be better than the cross. Especially if I can get multiple of them just kind of bouncing around. Let's see another $3 game that was really good was Carrie's Order Up. Huh. Haven't heard of that one yet. 
Fires another projectile. Yeah, just having two of these bounce around is going to get really nutty really fast. Yeah, Tracer and Bone are the only items I can think of that gets better with projectile speed. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm going to assume that they're going to get really good. If Bone shows up, I might grab it. Like normally, normally I just totally skip out on it because not worth it. But in this case, it's like, no. I want, I want these Rune Tracers to just be hella bouncing all the time. Snake game is also decent. Problem is the developer on uh, SNKRX is an awful dude. Like, it was a great game, but screw that guy. Um, ah, do I want Santa Water? No, Empty Tome. I want Burnt Bounce. I I followed, followed him on Twitter for a while. And, like, originally he would just kind of post stuff about, like, devlogs. And then he got really into NFTs and crypto. Which, like, okay, a lot of people are. I'm not going to immediately hold that against a developer. But then he got, like, harder about evangelizing for it, which is usually where I start drawing the line. Because um, it's not, like, idle curiosity. Like, I follow the the Defender's Quest developer, who at least has, like, kind of a more well-reasoned approach for it. Um, and, like, is talking about the actual practical ap applications and, like, how to make it not a scam and environmental concerns and a bunch of other things. And so it was like, you know, for that guy, it's fine, and he's doing his research, but most people tend to just kind of go all in in a bad way. Do we want the spinach? Spinach is good if I want to get the fire wand up so we can get meteors. However, Rune Tracer, I want to max it out, even if uh, it's not going to get anything for me immediately. NFTs are Bitcoin with more MLM, and honestly, I'd even say a lot of Bitcoins are MLMs, uh, just kind of different. Uh, Ponzi schemes, I guess, is the, the proper term for most Bitcoins, because usually you end up with like one or two people that get really into it. I'm actually going to grab the Attract Orb. Yeah, at least he's not Hero Siege level of awful. Well, here's the thing. So he starts uh, talking about how uh, people are trying to cancel him for it. Specifically, the, the developer of Luck Be a Landlord has been calling him out for being, you know, for his hot takes. And he compared himself to... Let's grab knife, because knife is one of the things I've been meaning to try and level up this entire time. It's terrible. Like, frankly, as far as weapons go, I think the knife is the worst, but still. Anyway, so Trampoline Tales, the developer of Luck Be a Landlord, had been calling out um, the SNKRX developer and uh, kind of in doing so had, you know, been unkind, but so the SNKRX developer compared himself to a couple other developers that have been cancelled recently, uh, namely the Fight Night developer, um, I'm trying to remember all the other ones, but he had actually brought up the Factorio developer, which caught my eye because I'm a huge Factorio fan, and I was, I was quite taken aback to find out that the, the reason why the Factorio developer had gotten in trouble was because the guy was, um, Apologizing. Apologizing was effectively playing off, uh, I guess, mild trigger warning for uh, bad shit, if you want to stay away from this for like the next three minutes. But uh, effectively, uh, Kovarex, the, the main lead dev for Factorio, um, was talking about how statutory rape was not a big deal. Uh, and that it was like fully consensual and like a bunch of other things, which like for me is like a big no-no, uh, just in terms of like... Somebody that specifically thinks that way usually, to me, ends up as extremely creepy and I want nothing to do with them. And so finding out that the, the Factorio developer was doing that and calling it S -S SJWBS, uh, what did I walk into? Um, me just unloading on the SNKRX developer, I apologize. Um, it just got brought up and I don't, I don't want people to be buying that game without at least knowing this. Because, like, for me, I put a lot of my time, uh, I put a lot of my time into SNKRX and, I mean, effectively vouching for it. Uh, and, just, like, a substantial portion of my channel's identity last year was specifically touting the game. And so to find out that the developer is, is scum, you know, maybe not as scum as Factorio, which is another game that I specifically, you know, vouched hard for and so on and so forth. And so, yeah, just finding out about these things is like, oh. 
but yeah so at this point don't don't get SNKRX unless you're like totally cool with people that think these things and it's like yeah you can separate the game from the dev but for me I can't I can't do that I would much rather support developers that don't believe these things like the moral dilemma of liking games done by Nicalis. They're often fun, but remembering it's Nicalis. Is Nicalis as bad anymore? I know Dangan and Nicalis, but wait, no, 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 no. Nicalis might still be bad. Dangan was the one that's maybe a little bit more dicey. Um, because I think it's still the same dude in charge. But yeah, I fully agree. And like, for me, there's just so many games out there that if a dev turns toxic, then it's easy for me to just bail and never try or play their game ever again. Ow, this is gonna hurt. Oh boy, that hurt. I don't really have a good way of keeping enemies off of me. All of my attacks are just RNG based. They do tons of damage. The Rune Tracer is absurd, but still. And the world is rough at the moment. People need to choose their battles when it comes to um, what they play and buy. And for me, it's just, I'm spoiled for choice always. So it's very easy for me to just be ambivalent to a game that I might enjoy if it turns out that the developer is a bad person because it's just like hey you know what I could play instead of Factorio Satisfactory or Dyson Sphere program or uh gosh Factory Town or like just gobs of other games that are even kind of in the same genre so it's it's very easy to just you know skip one versus the other without having to worry about moral quandaries Mindustry, yeah, it's another one, but you know, and then I will just, you know, keep moving from one game or genre to the next until I find kind of uh, a happy medium for like, hey, these are games made by good people. I've been mostly lucky enough to go through life unbothered directly by horrible people, but they still kind of exist in the periphery. That's always been something that I've been kind of focused towards. I went to a uh, uh, a liquor store a long time ago, and I was just listening to the guy behind the counter. Um, and, he, you know, we were in uh, a place where it's kind of... I would say kind of okay to be racist, but it's kind of common to be racist. And the dude was actually just spouting racial epithets. And I left, because like, I don't I don't need to be here. I don't need to be buying things from this liquor store. Uh, I remember him asking, like, yo, you gonna buy anything? I'm like, hell no, buy. <laughs> and just left, because yeah, I don't I don't even if it's like ten bucks, I don't want to support that. What if the dev developer of this game turns out to be a vampire and this entire game is vampire propaganda. As long as it's a sexy vampire, I'm fine with it. Holy moly, this is a really good run, by the way. I, on the topic of vampires, to move away from a, a heavier, uh, to move away from heavier things, I've always been really enamored with, uh, do I want to go the, with the candela candelabra door just to get the uh, bigger AoE for the... Yeah, it, let's do it. It's not particularly helpful for most of my attacks, but it makes the Santa water bigger. Um, let's see, speaking of... Santa water bigger. Also, if we get garlic, as unlikely as it is to find garlic at this point. Candel candelabra door is a weird word. Uh, it's because the developer, I thought it was a translation issue, but no. Um, people are theorizing the developer might be Italian and is making a bunch of like word puns based on either Italian or English. And I like that theory. Still hoping for a duplicator, absolutely. This plus duplicator or this on the skeleton with the duplicator is going to get nutty and I want it. Uh, we just have to get to that point. Uh, let's see, don't get the pun. Uh, candelabra is specifically the uh, the pun. Um, hey, duplicator. Perfect. And garlic. Or do I want to go spinach? Garlic gives me an AoE, but probably isn't that helpful. Spinach is probably more useful. I've got two more weapon slots, and... What weapon am I even trying to evolve here? Gloves, which I'm assuming is bracers, but there might actually be a glove glove. Uh, so, if it goes spinach, it gets me the meteors. Um, 
I don't actually have anything else that I could evolve. Unless I picked up the axe. I could pick up the axe now that I have the candelabra. Which would do it. Don't you have a bunch of AoE increases right now? Nah, not really. Not too many. Uh, so I think I'm going to skip on the garlic. We're going to grab the spinach. And I'll try and get an axe. Just because. Okay, bracers are for the knife. Cool. I was wondering about that. Because every guide has had people say just glove. And I'm like, glove? I haven't seen a glove yet. Uh, anyway, vampires. I was going to talk about that a little bit. But, so... Um, Loop Hero had a really interesting kind of side thing, barely mentioned and barely built upon, talking about specifically vampires as feudal lords. That the, the vampires would act as, as feudal, like local feudal lords instead of your standard, um, you know, human ones. And instead of just asking for money specifically, they wanted blood. And the idea of that was actually really cool to me, uh, not necessarily because, like, you know, blood taxes instead of money taxes? Well, I mean, kind of. That most media and lore always presents vampires as these these parasitic creatures. Um, and the idea of vampires actually serving not as a parasite system... But, or like a parasitic creature that preys upon, you know, the local populace, but one that actually serves as kind of the local feudal lords, you know, protecting the people, um, maybe acting as like kind of a, a very long term, uh, adjudicator type figure, um, and really just watching over the local populace instead of like your standard nobility system it was fascinating to me because once again, vampires are always just bad. Um, but I, I remember specifically for the Castlevania anime, if any of you guys saw that, that Dracula at the start was not bad. Like, the dude was morally ambiguous, but he wasn't, like, strictly a terrible person. And that, you know, spoilers, he doesn't actually really lose his mind, go evil until they straight up burn his wife at, uh... Okay, we want to grab the axe and see if I can get that to max. Because if I can level that up and get the evolve version. It was a loner who didn't like people annoying people, annoying him. Yeah, but he wasn't like actively just trying to murder the populace and spreading plague and whatnot. Um, and so I, I, I really liked that depiction of him. It's the first 10 minutes of episode one. I know, but some people haven't seen it. I don't, I don't know. But Jesus Christ, these things are stupid strong. Um, and then they killed his wife who broke his loner streak and then he started uh, the world's longest suicide path. Yeah, I, I I honestly actually stopped watching pretty quickly after it just became generic. Um, oh, I do actually have space if I want to grab garlic. Is there anything else I'd want to grab other than the garlic? Because the only two that I want to level up now we're grabbing garlic. It's probably useless to me at this point, but I'm going to grab it anyway. Interesting series of books called Rune Lords by David Farland. Where feudal lords use magic to take donations of strength, wisdom, dexterity, will, beauty from their subjects in order to essentially become super soldiers. Interesting concept. Huh. Yeah. But so, uh, I would love to see more media where it tries to slot, um, it, it tries to slot pre-existing, like, monstrous creatures in such a way that makes more sense beyond just having them be the ooky spooky that goes bump in the night. Okay, do we want more damage? Eh, let's keep working on the fire wand, because if we can get that up to meteor, that makes it so much better. I think I will always pick these rune tracers in the future. They're beyond compare. Like, I thought crosses turn to swords are absurd, but this is just a completely different thing. Hey, thank you, Matthias. 720 for the 100 bits, and thank you, Couchmaster Lewis, for the six-month resub. Have you ever evolved the Bibble? No, I've not evolved the Bibble yet because I, uh, I need, I needed the Rune Tracer to get the Spellbinder, and I need the Spellbinder to evolve the Bibble, and so I've been putting that off. 
The show Sanctuary did the same kind of thing. Werewolves were excellent tinkerers for some reason. That's a little confusing. I'm not quite sure about that one. But, like, it would make total sense if uh, werewolves were, like, your standard hunters. Woodsmen, huntsmen, lumberjacks and stuff. You know, slightly more... Well, I mean, anything that would, would utilize their smell. Or sense of smell. You know, hey... Werewolves are really good search and rescue. Werewolves are really good, you know, herbalists or uh, great at hunting for mushrooms or some other things. Also, thank you, Beldair, for the five gifted subs. Thanks so much. And thank you, Aura Master, for the 36 month resub. Hi, Wander. Thanks for being an amazing content creator. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see. So, you haven't been here in a while. What is this? So, this is Vampire Survivors, this is a game that came out a couple days ago uh, that is. Uh, kind of nuts. It doesn't look like much until you start playing it, and then it's, like, weirdly addicting. But the entire... Wow. Okay, maybe upgrading knives, especially with Duplicator, is worth it. Um, But so the entire point of this game is that you have endless waves of enemies coming after you, and you are trying to survive their onslaught for half an hour. Uh, at which point, the Grim Reaper comes in and just shuts you down. Um, and it has... A bunch of different power-ups, mostly based on Castlevania weapons uh, that you can pick up. Axes, knives, whips. Uh, there we go. There should be a whole bunch of things that I've missed. Oh, knives can start passing through enemies. That's that's sufficiently big. A fun fact, Wander's first YouTube video on this game got my brother to buy it. I had three bucks, like, there are a few games that I say, like, no, just go buy this now. Don't wait for a sale. Don't do anything. Just pick it up. And this is absolutely one of them. Okay, tractor, garlic, and fire wand. Honestly, I would love to see more developers kind of embrace the idea of effectively complete game jam games. Like, really... Uh, like, really tight ideas, but short, small, and kind of comparatively lightweight. Wow, knives are just stupid if you want to take out a mid-boss. I didn't even think about that. I wonder how many times I've gotten a tier 5 chest. Not often. They're kind of rare, comparatively. But yeah, like, I've seen a lot of really neat Game Jam games go by, but many of them are never taken to completion. But what's a good example? Um, games like Minute and Gato Roboto, games that can be beaten in X number of hours, like, make them and sell them for 10 bucks. I, I always see, like, a lot of developers going for magnum opuses as their, like, first game that they ever make. And sometimes it works for, like, I don't know. Let's go with, uh... Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a magnum opus, and it was the first released by a developer. And often, those are kind of hard to follow up on. Isn't Minute finished? Yeah, it's finished. M my point is less early access, more... I really want small games. Like, there's a meme going around on social media. Uh, oh gosh. Whatever that... Uh, do wanna... Let's, let's just go spinach. We want the bonus damage. Buffing garlic would be nice, but it's... That's very secondary. I mostly just wanted to get it to see what maximum garlic looked like. Um, but it's, oh, whatever the guy that owns, is it WWE or whatever? You know, he has that kind of, like, multiple expressions where his head, like, slowly tilts back and he looks, uh, more and more, I, uh, uh, orgasmic, I guess. And people often use it to kind of, uh, describe, like, their different levels of opinion on a thing. And so it's, like... I, I think a number of people have been specifically reacting to Dying Light 2 being 500 hours long if you want to see and do literally everything in that game. And it was just kind of like, Bored Face, 500 hour game. Uh, excited Face, or, you know, kind of like, somewhat happy face, like 50 hour game. And then by the end of it, it's just like, absolute bliss for 5 to 6 hour experience. And I, I think a lot of this maybe has to do with the fact that a lot of, uh you know, gamers from my generation are now, you know, working adults. And many of us might not have as much time to play on, uh, spend on games. But for me, I really adore these, like, kind of short and sweet experiences that can be um, picked up, 
put down or beaten within X number of hours. And so for this one, it's very much, it feels like a game jam game, but the core concept is so like well executed and so tight that it doesn't matter how simple it is in, on paper compared to say, let's say Risk of Rain 2, it works perfectly well. And there's enough like repetition and interesting build stuff that you can get into. So it's it's actually kind of exciting to be like, okay, so this run I'm going to pick up these things. And then maybe like one or two items get, get released and it's like, oh, this changes everything. And it really does. You know, these, these bouncing orbs are nuts. And I clearly want to make the most of them in the future. Okay. Uh, someone is asking, is there a new patch? I'm playing on the beta branch. Beta branch has slightly different uh, things, so I know the axe has been retuned a bit. Jordan type experiences are satisfying when they get polished to a shine. Oh. Uh, I don't recognize. So Hellfire. Okay, so that's the meteor one. Is that an axe upgrade or is that the evolved axe? I don't actually know. Nah. It's not Evolved Axe, though next chest will get me Evolved Axe. Uh, yeah, let's go Bracer. We want my projectiles to just be going hyper. There we go. Wow. I don't think I've ever just skunked this run as hard as I have on this one. Okay, more Tract Orb? No. We want more Knife. More Nif. Value of a game, five hours. Wait. Value of a game, five hours to one dollar spent to be 100%. This game already is covered for a three dollar value for me. I always take some umbrage with the like dollar per hour ratio. Because I, I think that does actually um, prevent a lot of people from diving into experiences that are shorter, sweeter, and worth it all the same. I'm trying to think of a good example of a game like that. Um... So I've been playing recently. There was something that was like only 10 hours long and I absolutely adored how short it was. Uh, I want to say it was like a triple A, triple A game, but I can't exactly remember, which is a bit of a shame. Mon Cage. Actually, I haven't played Mon Cage yet. No. Oh. It'll come to me or it won't. At some point, I'll do a video on on short but sweet games. Hey, there's a T5 chest. All right, this should give me an evolution, attract orb. Oh, it didn't evolve my axes, but it did evolve my knives. Evolve knife fires with no delay. Requires bracer, and then we just get all the other stuff. Ah, oh, holy shit. Knife is way better than I thought it was. I was originally kind of besmirching it because like, eh, it doesn't seem that good. And the answer is nope, it good. I just shoot in line and everything dies. Okay, let's just keep leveling up my projectile speed. I want I want my bouncing shots to go absolute wild. Yeah, I guess that's another another point. The knives are probably maybe a little bit better on this map. Eh, I can see them being good on forest too, though. Or you're talking about the uh, the rune tracers. The thing is, the rune tracers bounce off the edge of the screen, makes them like a spot better than I think even the bone. A triple A bloat has hurt the dollar per hour metric. It's not a terrible way to think about games if you're on a limited budget, but big publishers. I've exploited that aspect in the broadest of demographics. Yeah, so specifically for the Dying Light one, when I heard that it was potentially upwards of 500 hours to, um... It was potentially 500 hours to beat the entirety of, like, Dying Light 2 and see all of it. I actually, like, am less interested in that game now that I know it's that long. Um, it's part of the reason why I'd, I've never played any of the modern, um... Assassin's Creed games, and I probably won't ever. They just don't seem worth it to me. Die, thank you. Please evolve my axe. 
Egg grinding is not a fun way to pad our length. Hey, we did evolve the axe into scythes. Okay, scythe passes through enemies. Woo! Okay, that's pretty good. I'm not as big on it. I think I will still keep away from axes, to be honest. But it's it's better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, I'm just going to go on an adventure. Reason being is mostly I want to uh, I want to see if there's anything on the sides. We've got eight minutes to get wherever, and I've already completed this build, so who cares? And like, a game can absolutely be 500 hours of fun, but you usually like that usually works better in sandbox games, uh, you know, Minecraft or Satisfactory where it's kind of like make your own fun as opposed to a developer trying to provide ample fun for 100 or 500 hours or something to that degree. Because often there's just not enough content in a video game to really fill that out. Unless you're absurdly uh, into whatever the core gameplay mechanics are. So like shooters are generally a good example of like, yeah, you could put a, a hundreds or thousands of hours into a first person shooter and uh, actually probably have a good time. Hey, here's the stone mask. Character earns 10% more coins. Neat. I was wondering about that one. Yeah, roguelike games too. Yeah, those are good examples. Where it's a game that you really could spend dozens of hours on a, on a roguelike, or hundreds of hours on a roguelike and not even notice. Yeah, RimWorld is easy to put time into. Yeah, because once again, it's a kind of make-your-own-fun sandbox game with emergent... Uh, storytelling elements and some other things. Kenshi, RimWorld, fact, Factorio, Satisfactory. I probably shouldn't say Factorio if I'm, you know, kind of got a beef with them. Uh, what are some other great examples? I mean, MMOs oftentimes. Things that are like inherently multiplayer. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic or Left 4 Dead. Like those are games that you can play over and over and over again. See the same levels over and over and over again and still not really care because the core gameplay and draw of it is so good that it doesn't matter. I see, Dragon Quest Builders can be good for a long run. Yeah, there are a couple of games that break the mold and can be entertaining. Though, frankly, by the time I got to the end of Dragon Quest Builders, there was a part of me that was very much ready to be done. Uh, the, the main reason why Dragon Quest Builders was so fun for so long was because they kept restarting you. It was more like five different games with some loosely tied together elements and an overarching plotline, as opposed to you know, something that truly stood on its own. Also have a bit of time on Spore. Yeah, once again, sandbox game with kind of emergent gameplay. Also, really stupid looking creatures. Huh. Not used to bat swarms. Oh, you look like a boss. Pot roast or a big coin bag. I was really hoping I could level up my stone mask some more. Alas. Damn, this dude is tough. I think last time I was here, I just insta deleted him. I like the Dragon Quest Builder's town mechanics, where rooms perform functions based on what you put in them. Wish there was a game that did something more with that idea fleshed out. I want to play a combination between Dark Cloud and Dragon Quest Builders, where you're going into an infinite dungeon and bringing back resources to build your town up. And instead of leveling up, you get stats based on how good your town is. You know, how many functions it fulfills. You know, how happy your people are. How many of their specific needs have been addressed. Um... As well as, like, certain specific rooms give better bonuses. So, like, a black, uh, a smithy will let you make new weapons, yes, but also kind of determines how good they are and how much damage they do. But also, the more points, uh, like, the more effort you put into that smithy, the better your, your, your stuff is and your stats are overall. And 
sounds like Darkest Dungeon. Kind of, but I want it to be more sandbox-ish and maybe a little less depressing. I love Darkest Dungeon, but that game, it doesn't really have the town builder feel. The, the upgrading the town, yeah, does provide you kind of a progression system, but it doesn't feel really like you're building the town up. Like, the elements are there, but it's not the same. Let's see, Digimon Cyber Sleuth was fun, but imagine if it had more procedural generation and roguelike elements. I think that would have been interesting. I found a lot of the level design to be pretty eh. And so, yeah, giving it a more of a roguelike feel, so maybe every time you go into the dungeon and then come out, the plot progresses in some way, assuming you've gone far enough. I can see that actually being quite good. Wonder would you ever play Warframe again? So on the topic of games that are hundreds of hours long, one of the main reasons why I specifically stopped playing Warframe is that it would have taken hundreds of hours just to like unlock everything. But I don't necessarily have like a beef with putting that time in, but I just I can't do it anymore. And so with Warframe, it was just like, all right, now to grind to get your spaceship. Now to grind to, to get a Necromech or whatever they're called. Now to grind to get the latest weapon. Now to grind to get the latest frame. And it was fun, but gosh, I'd just rather play other games. Does Rune Tracer evolve? Not yet. I hope it does. I hope they add a evolution to it. But as it currently stands, it does not. So many snake snake ladies. Yawp. Just absolutely swimming in snack. And so I think Warframe is one of those games that is great if you specifically don't have anything else to play. Have dozens of hours to put into it and or just enough friends to kind of uh, flesh the game out to add just more. But from my perspective, I generally ended up playing alone, grinding alone, maybe maybe working with a couple of fans here and there. Um, but I was often just running the same missions over and over, uh, specifically for money, and that was kind of the big issue. Could you get a mega chest after hitting max level? Yes, but it would just give you money, which is good, but it's not going to give you new perks or equipment. Okay. So, as much as I like Warframe, and I probably will go back to it for some reason at some point, but it's probably not going to be a, an anytime soon kind of deal. Just because even though they've kind of continued the story finally, it still would represent almost playing through one to six different games just to catch up in such a way that I could show it off properly. Because that, that's kind of my my beef is that, like, any amount of time that I put into one game is time that I could be putting into another game. And I am so spoiled for choice with games that it's actually really difficult for me to want to commit to that kind of time expenditure for one specific game. Unless it is that good. Um, so, kind of, for example, I'm trying to get through the Final Fantasy games. And... Uh, I have been trying to get through the main story quest of Final Fantasy XIV, which may be a hot take for some people. Let's actually grab some HP here, because I am... I almost died. It hurt. Uh, I'm just going to live here, where they can only approach me from a much tighter window. And then I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit. Cripes, I do not remember it being this pushy. Well, here we are. Yeah, Final Fantasy games is a rough grind. It's not as bad as you would think. Um, but maybe it's because I've been mostly playing the... I've been playing mostly the, the Pixel Remasters, which are very well balanced for not garbage grind. Um, I'm a little bit worried once I get up to like Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 because I don't actually like the ATB system. As a kid, I thought the ATB system was brilliant. 
And I'm dead. Ah. Uh. All right, so we got the stone mask. Yeah, we got a lot of unlocks there. Rune, ta Rune Tracer, so we now have the Spellbinder. We've got Garlic to level 7, so we've unlocked Poe, the old man. Five minutes with Pascalina, we've unlocked the Rune Tracer. Evolve the knife, 500 coins. And Axe, 500 coins. Cool. So if I check achievements, what am I missing? Survive five minutes with Gennaro gets me Pomerola. And is that it, actually? No, we got one more. Oh, defeat the forest. And evolve the King Bible, which I think we can finally do. Oh, okay, so we wanna we wanna grab Gennaro. I don't actually wanna roll as Gennaro. I don't even really wanna ro roll as Poe. But before we do that, I should take a look. Ah, oh, it's 11,000. We wanna grab the luck upgrades. Those are a must. Somebody was sassing me. I was confused originally with the... Hey, they changed it. Inflicts... Uh, races inflicted damage by 5% per rank. Originally, this said level. And the reason why that confused me is because the characters say per level. Um, attacks deal 10% more damage every 10 levels. Oh, yeah, they changed that. That makes a lot of sense. Max 30%. It's the same language as the power-ups. And so I was originally confused. I was like, does this mean like up to 25% more damage per level? Because that'd be really stupid. Scythe had the most damage at 41k. Really? Or most DPS. Cripes. And I thought the Scythe was trash. I should have actually checked my run stats there. Oh well. Next run. <laughs>